All right, hello, wine drinking people. Today is Wednesday, the 24th of June, making our, sorry, the 17th of June. This tasting is on the 24th of June. Next Wednesday, long, hot summer here, man. And uh, hey, we got just the thing for you at this tasting, our Austrian, German, and Alsace tasting. And, uh, you know, we had to combine all three of those. Say that three times really fast. Well, uh, we've got one of the greatest producers from Alsace. It's going to be the cornerstone of this tasting, Domain Zinn Umbricht. And uh, I think it's one of the greatest producers in the world. I had an opportunity to uh, visit Zinn Umbricht, and Olivier Humbricht uh, gave us an incredible tour, tasting of 25 different wines. There is a dazzling array of different wines in this portfolio, four of them. Uh, well, even though we've only got eight wines, these guys are monopolizing half of the wines on the table. And uh, let me tell you, like I said, very rich, a very sweet style for Alsace. But, uh, you know, Alsace is an area where there's some residual sugar in the wines. They uh, are usually counterbalanced by a very high acidity. Just like Germany, the wines are similar. And uh, German wines, very Riesling-centric. So uh, we're going to have a couple German wines and a couple Austrian wines here also from our friend Jeff uh, um, sorry, Jay Walmer from the Florida Wine Company, and he's got an incredible book of stuff from Theory Tees. He's going to be sending a few things our way for this event. And uh, they do make some red wine, although most of it's white in Germany and Austria, but they're lighter reds. They're great reds for the summertime. Pinot Noir, Blauburgunder, uh, Zweigelt, and really cool stuff. You know, the Germans at one time produced the most expensive wines in the world. It wasn't that long ago. It was just before World War One, and then a couple of world wars, and all well, the taste has changed you know fine wine from sweet to dry and today a lot of the great German wines no longer sweet they're dry they got this new classification Grosgewex where all the Grand Cru's uh, are located and they've known where these vineyards have been at for a long time but they've just got around to classifying them legally and it's kind of ironic because you know the best wines in Germany well a lot of people consider them sweet and even though these vineyards are considered Grand Cru now they can't use the Grosgevex classification if the wines are made in a sweeter style, like the traditional Spatlays, Auchelais, Trockenbaron Auchelais, Baron Auchelais, those wines. You'll just see the vineyard names. And uh, like I said, uh, we're going to have some great stuff from Germany. Austria, well, Austria, they had a big issue with their image in the 80s with the ethyl and glycol scandal. So today you don't see much sweet wine in Austria either. And Gruner Vetliner being the star grape here, but they, they make some great Rieslings here also and some other aromatic whites that are fantastic. Bottle for bottle, one of the most expensive wine producing countries, well, the most expensive wines rather, bottle for bottle produced in any country in the world. Well, they don't have much of a bulk wine business in uh, Austria, so the average bottle price goes way up when you don't have a bunch of cheap stuff under $10 a bottle. So check it out. Everything we're going to be serving at our German, Austrian, and Alsace tasting coming up on the 24th of June at Cafe Max to quench your thirst for the hot summer. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, Always drink the good stuff first.